Hey, and we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and our first impressions of the latest games releasing. And lately, we've been playing Scorn. Now, this is a very different game, one that we've actually been anticipating low key for a while. It, it first showed up in 2014, it had multiple Kickstarter campaigns, it had delays. Ebb Software, the developers have been working on it for a while, and now we're here. I've kept my eye on it personally because of the style, specifically. It, it was heavily inspired by Swiss artist H.R. Giger and Polish artist Zdzislaw Bekszynski, uh, which is just a downright formidable combination of uh, inspiration to build something off of. It's absolutely wild stuff visually. And it is certainly an interesting game to talk about. There's a good chance it might not be for you, though. Long story short, after finishing Scorn, I felt a bit disappointed. After this game was in the works for so long, I expected more, but I still kind of enjoyed a lot of the ride. And I'm gonna go back and forth on this one if you can't tell. And I'm not the only one. Take a look at other reviews or just comments online. People either think this is pretty cool or the worst thing ever. Me, I want more from this game ultimately. It's extremely short with some unfulfilling moments, but with cool atmosphere, exploration, and some good puzzles. But you know, if you're like me and you were interested from the jump and are into this type of thing we don't really get in video games that I'll explain. Like if you're that person, this specific type of player, then I ultimately still recommend checking it out despite the problems. There's passion in this game for art history weirdos and old school gamers. It may not be for a lot of you out there, but it might be for some of you. Now, hear me out, a positive first. What's cool about Scorn is that despite what some casual viewers might have assumed, it's not just a creepy first person shooter. Yes, there are weapons, but don't expect much of a run and gun experience. It's, it's a bit of like a walk around, old school puzzle based game with little drops of survival horror and guns here and there. Like I said in another video, uh, it's basically like, what if a game like The Witness or Mist was also like icky and gross and had weird guns sometimes? Scorn just kind of dumps you into its world. You're this mysterious humanoid being and you make your way through a few kind of sort of themed areas with their own puzzles and their own dynamics. You don't really have an objective, you know, you're just kind of getting through and experiencing this world. And uh, what a world to experience. I mean, looking at it here, yes, it is very slow paced from the gameplay footage, but there's a lot of cool stuff. Like I, I know I kicked off the intro uh, with like visual inspirations, but seriously, this is my favorite aspect. The vibe, the atmosphere, the tone, the environments, just really all the work here. Playing this game at night with the lights off and a good pair of headphones is what I definitely recommend if you're into this. This is the best thing about the game. Like the sound design of all the creepy elements from your footsteps to creatures to switches and doors, all have tons and tons of details. Everything feels either really alive or really gross and dead to, you know, just the spooky ambient background noise, the environments themselves with all these atmospheric effects and cool details. All of that is because they take such cool art inspirations and the areas are shockingly unique. Claustral Claustrophobic and robotic, wet and creepy and sexual, sometimes super sci-fi, sometimes wide open and awe-inspiring or just straight up spooky. There's a lot of good stuff here and the game is minimal. There's no dialogue, there's not a lot of presentation, just a lot of immersion. The game tries really hard not to remind you that you're playing a video game, except for some slight HUD elements here and there. It's really simple and there's no help or hint indicators. Like you, you just gotta learn how this world works and how to progress through it. This game is pretty old school in its feel and it's definitely not, it's not for babies. There is no handholding whatsoever. And I think some people are gonna bounce off of that immediately. Areas are really maze-like and you can get lost and sometimes even just lose track of what you were even trying to do. There are some difficult puzzles and uh, they're not optional. So if you can't crack them, you can't progress. And I expect some people to hit a hard wall and get frustrated. I've already seen people in comments. Like puzzles can be obtuse and annoying, but getting them after banging my head against the wall like for so long was satisfying. I really liked that. I really enjoyed figuring out this strange world and lumbering through it and figuring out weird, like otherworldly puzzles and environmental things. I actually wish, unfortunately though, that there was more of this and less combat. There's first person shooting in the game, like I said, but it's few and far between and it is just straight up not 
good. It just feels like a really unnecessary addition to the game. It feels like it wasn't confident in just being a chill, creepy, old school puzzle game. It needed some booms and it feels out of place here. To its credit, you know, at least the one thing I do like about it is that ammo is extremely limited. So it's like survival horror limited and it can be stressful. That's cool. But I, I think it's like actually not a full on survival horror game. It's just these occasional encounters. And the problem for me personally was that the enemies were boring and unfulfilling. Like you're slow and there's no way to defend yourself and it all just feels unfun. Fighting these things is just a bummer. Like what kills me the most is that the game world and like all these statues and temples in it are filled with all this crazy inspired sci-fi art and weird stuff, you know, a marriage of flesh and bone and metal and strangeness. And then the enemies that you fight are all just kind of like gross little annoying bugs. Nothing surprising or scary or even very interesting to fight. And that unfortunately includes bosses too. It's just an absolute waste of a sci-fi horror concept. I was really sad to see the final boss here. It, it pained me. So couple the weird combat with the occasional glitch or bug and an occasionally frustrating checkpoint system. It's not a good combination. It would have been better as just a straightforward puzzle game committed to it because the way ammo and health works and how the weapons work and how they look is actually really creative. It's just wasted. There are four weapons you get over the course of the game and they're standard stuff like with how they fire, but just the look and feel of them was cool. It was great to pick one up and in the game style of not telling you anything, you go, okay, what is this gun? How does it shoot? Is this a shotgun? I don't know. And then just figuring it out because the game doesn't scream it at you. But again, it just didn't all feel very fun once it was put together. I tried to actively avoid combat whenever I could. That being said, the game does weave a pretty cool tale though, like despite it not spelling anything out at all. The adventure, like it, it, I guess if you wanna call it that, is super vague and it doesn't set you up with anything. You're, you're just going through the game, observing, and dealing with some nasty things and some nasty things happening to you specifically. There's a lot of cool elements of like Cronenberg style body horror and you experience that stuff, you deal with that stuff and you move environment to environment, just a couple, but each with their own kind of vibe, like I said. Many areas and many weird puzzle things you do are just gross out moments that are downright jaw dropping in a good way. But the game just kind of ends but it's in a way that I found pretty interesting because like I keep saying, nothing is spelled out to you. The game is kind of just an experience and then you interpret it in your own way. That's not me like defending an empty game or, or trying to come up with an excuse or anything, mind you. That was seemingly the intention here. There's a lot you can walk away thinking, like it's themes of something eating you from the inside, life and death sexuality or birth or sickness. I don't know, I'm not super smart or anything and I also don't wanna spoil anything like how I feel about it, but uh, I did find it cool. The game did still manage to leave an impact on me despite it having a lot of issues. My only other problem is like I said at the start, the game is criminally short and believe it or not, this might be a controversial opinion. Sometimes I like short games. I love a game that knows what it wants to do and doesn't overstay its welcome and unfortunately in this instance, I feel like it was just a little half-baked. It did the thing I really don't like. Just as it starts to really get going, it just ends. The pacing felt really whack. I think I finished it in like five hours. That's gonna, of course, depend pretty significantly on how stuck you get on puzzles, but still. I even think it could have used another hour at the very least to expand on some things. Like one of the last weapons you get is like super close to the end of the game and you don't even get to have any fun with it. I think the way it's paced actually makes it feel shorter, and I was disappointed. Now, I get it's a small studio, but I wanted a bit more game and a less of that awful combat. Still, I wanna get through to some of you out there, even with a deeply flawed game that I think is only for a select few people, I kept thinking about it after I finished it, and I think that's worth something. For some of those puzzles and some of the wild moments in this game, like, I'm going to remember it. It's going to be memorable. So Scorn, as you can probably tell, is pretty middle of the road for me, but like I said, I think it's worth trying if you've heard some of the setup and some of the elements and you really like this type of art and experience and can forgive some things. Otherwise, if you're not that type of player, you're not gonna be into it. 
but I hope I spelled that out for you guys. This is a before you buy. You know how this goes by now. I give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinion. And now I wanna hear yours in the comments. Chances are some of you, if you were excited for this game, you already dove in right away and finished it. So let me know what you're thinking. If you bounced off of it immediately, if it's not your thing or you found it dull, would love to hear why. So I'd love to know what didn't work for you or what did work for you down in the comments. Let's talk anything scorn. And if this helped you out, clicking the like button is all you gotta do. We very much appreciate that though. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.